Well, I'm glad we're here to worship the Lord today. How about you? Amen. Mm -hmm. And uh, today I want us to take a look into God's Word. And I want us to thank, uh, there's, a, there's a couple titles or a couple ways this, this sermon could possibly go, you know. It's one of those, just one of those things. And uh, as I was uh, looking over these notes and thinking about it, I'm thinking about our heart, the hearts of people, you know, the inner person, the, how, how we process life, how we think, um, what motivates us, what's our dreams and goals and all that stuff. And, and so maybe this message could be about protecting our hearts at all times, at all times, but, but it also could maybe be changed. Can it really happen in my life? And, and that may sound kind of uh, squirrely, possibly. <laughs> But then again, you got to consider who's up here uh, sharing with you. But God, God is so concerned about each and every one of us. He's concerned about our hearts. He's, he's concerned about uh, what motivates us and what drives us. And, you know, maybe what our vision is. You know, our first song was Be Thou My Vision. And, and Lisa and I don't collaborate on songs and, and the message and Joyce and... I'm always amazed at how songs are picked that fit with the things I've been wrestling with. But be thou my vision, you know. Is God your vision? Is is he your? Is is he like some the the, the one you're focused on in life? And and if he is, then you're going to go to higher ground, right? Mm -hmm. If God is your vision, you can't help but gain some elevation, so to speak, right? And, and the higher you get, you know, you, you get closer to, to thinking about, you know, to God be the glory. Uh, you know, you stand up on a mountaintop ridge when the sun's coming up. You're on higher ground. And, and you see the majesty of creation. And you see the glory of God in the colors of a sunrise. And, and it's just amazing. But so often in the life we're, we're going through, the days we're living in, it's easy to get distracted and lose heart. Paul in 2 Corinthians 4, verses 16 through 18 says, Therefore we did not lose heart. Even though our outward man is perishing, yet the inward man is being renewed day by day. As, as we start this Advent season... Uh, and for uh, our Jewish friends around the world, uh, Hanukkah starts tonight, a festival of lights. As, as we move into this final month of 2021 on our calendar, I really want us to think about not losing heart and about God's desire to change us and to, and to work us over, right? To work us over, to... to uh, as I often tell people, sometimes they maybe need to be smacked around a little bit with the love of Jesus. You know, I hope that makes sense. But, but God wants to do something in our lives. But we have a role to play. And, and Paul talked on that in 1 Timothy chapter 4. When he talked talk to Timothy, he says to exercise yourself towards godliness. And he says, you know, bodily exercise profits a little bit. But godliness is profitable for all things, having promises of the life that now is and of that which is to come. So part, part, of, part of what's going on in my mind and my heart is, as I think about these things is as I, as I need to protect my heart. Because my heart sometimes isn't the heart of, that God wants and if my heart's going to be the heart that God wants, then, then some, some change is going to have to happen, right? And you think about, can change really happen in your life? You know, some people say, well, I can't change. I'm just, that's just the way I am, right? A, a, a while back, a couple years ago, I was talking with a fella, and he just says, uh, oh, I got a bad temper. And, and he's like trying to talk like he's got this temper in his DNA, and in a sense he does because he's got the sin nature, right? And I says... I told him, I says, you, and, and the other guy that was in the room, he says, oh yeah, he's always had a bad temper. Since the time he was a kid, he had a bad temper. And he just can't control it. And I says, you don't have a bad temper. I says, you have a lack of self-control. He didn't know what to think about that. I don't think anybody ever told him that. And, 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 and I challenged him to think about change. You need to change. So for Christians, we need to change. 
We need, we need to become the people God wants us to be. But sometimes, beloved, do you ever feel like you think it's impossible? I cannot change. You lose heart because you think that God can't help you with whatever it is you need help with. I've been there, and, and some of you have been there. And we get discouraged. We get discouraged, and, and, and discouragement is a terrible thing on the Christian journey, because who loves discouragement in the life of a born-again soul? Who loves it? Who gets the biggest smile when a born-again person gets oh, discouraged? Satan. Huh? Satan. 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 That old rascally trickster, that worm. Satan loves it when people get discouraged, when Christians get discouraged, because then we become ineffective. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 16. Today is going to be a little bit of a Bible drill. Um, I should take that out, because that guy will just fall out. So 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 16. Paul writing to the church in Corinth. The church, I'm sure people in Corinth got a little little depressed, a little stressed out. They wanted some change. They needed some change, right? Just like we need change. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 16. Paul's, Paul talking to, to about the circumstances of his ministry, but he says, Therefore we do not lose heart, but though our outer man is decaying, yet our inner man is being renewed day by day. The outer man is decaying, but the inner man is being renewed. Paul is basically saying, like, I've dealt with a lot of troubles with you, church in Corinth, but I'm not going to get discouraged. We're going to be renewed, okay? Because in verse 18, he says, we want to look at the things which are, well, we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things that are not seen. Paul here is encouraging the, the Corinthian church to make some changes because they had not been protecting their hearts, I don't think. And life sometimes seems to be a losing battle. Paul says, we do not lose heart. You know, Christian, it's easy to lose heart and to feel like it's a losing battle. This doesn't matter. And so much more during this, you know, festive holiday season. Depression can be a big, big, big thing in our lives, can it? I bet many of us here are battle with depression at times. But God wants us to stay focused on him. Because life is not a losing battle for the Christian, right? We know we win, but along the way, there's definitely some struggles, and there's definitely some trials. And we tire of the inconsistencies in life. Proverbs 25, 28, we won't go there, but inconsistencies in life wear us down. Sometimes, do you feel tired? After these big holiday seasons, do you feel tired? Sometimes Thanksgiving morning comes and you're just wore out, right? Especially those who have been doing all the cooking and all the shopping. Or think about Christmas. Sometimes, you know, we get so caught up in, in, in a Christmas celebration and the things that lead up to it. We're just exhausted. We have no time to enjoy what it's really about, right? Because we're, we're, we're just wore out. Our hearts have been, are, get conflicted. They get drawn in different directions. But beloved, as God's people, we should long for something better for our life, shouldn't we? We should long for something better for our life. 1 Corinthians chapter 9, uh, verses 24 through 27. So I want us to think about protecting our hearts and can we really make changes? It says, do you not know that those who run in a race all run, but only one receives the prize? Run in such a way that you may win. Everyone who competes in the games exercises self-control in all things. They then do it to receive a perishable wreath, but we an imperishable. Therefore, I run in such a way as not without aim. I box in such a way as not beating the air. But I discipline my body and make it my slave, so after I have preached to others, I myself will not be disqualified. 
Paul here is saying we got to run life in a way that's going to please God. And, and when we do run with an aim, with a focus, with a goal of, of being maybe conformed to the image of Christ, then it matters, and, and, and we, can, we can have something better. Because, a Christian, what you do matters, okay? So we don't want to lose heart. Because it's easy to, to, to lose focus, right? It's easy to get bogged down. So I want us to I want to I want to emphasize and, and maybe I hope I hope this is making sense. If it's not, bear with me. But Christian, we have to stay focused on Christ. We have to stay focused on entering that rest and staying in that rest. But we can't do it in and of ourselves. It's got to be a God thing. It's got to be the Holy Spirit working. Because we look at what's visible and what's temporary, don't we? It's hard not to. You wake up. Your knees hurt. You got to put glasses on so you can see things out up in the distance, especially if you're hunting, right? It's like, is that a stump or is that a deer? Is that an elk? What is that? And, and we get discouraged and we get frustrated with, with, with the things of life that wear us out. We get frustrated with the busyness of life. And God wants us to see what's eternal and focus on things of Him. And part of that has to do with our heart. With, with our heart. Okay? If you think about it, what, flow, what does the Bible say flows from our heart? Are our thoughts, thoughts affected by our heart? And, and, and just so you know, the heart is the place where the intellect, emotions, and will come together. When I say heart here today, that's what I'm talking about. Where your intellect, the way you think, your emotions, how you feel... And your will, you know, how, how you live, maybe. Where that all comes together. That, that's what I mean by the heart. It's really the place where the real person resides inside of you. The scripture decide, describes the heart as a person's character or inner life with, with, with your desires or, or with your purpose for living. Genesis 6, 5. Um, Deuteronomy eleven thirteen are a couple verses. How about Colossians 3.22? Let's turn to Colossians 3.22. Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians. In Colossians 3.22, Paul has a word here to slaves. Now, nobody is a big fan of slavery that I'm aware of, you know, for slavery. But he's writing to slaves because there were plenty of slaves in the Roman Empire. And a lot of those slaves became born-again people. But they were yet still slaves in, in an earthly, uh, worldly uh, perspective. Slaves in all things, obey those who are your masters on earth. Not with external service as those who merely please men, but with sincerity of heart, fearing the Lord. If there's a group of people who could have got depressed and, 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 and been grumbling, just think if you're a slave, somebody owned you. You are not an independent unit, so to speak. But yet you're free in Christ. So in one sense, you're free in Christ. You have heaven waiting you, but in another sense, you have to do what this taskmaster has for you to do. Paul here, speaking through the power of the Holy Spirit, says, Live, live in a life please men but please the Lord because your heart has to be focused on on something above your circumstances in Matthew chapter 5 verse 8 the Lord Jesus he, he speaks to the heart and he says blessed are the pure in heart for they will see God God wants his people to be pure in heart pure thoughts he wants our emotions to be pure you ever think about that pure emotions my emotions run to anger when they run to selfishness when my when my emotions run to uh, being just upset and fretting that's not really pure in heart is it i need to focus on god and then i can see god And what else does the scripture say about our heart? What's Jeremiah 17, 9 say? 
The heart is what? Desperately good. Wicked. <laughs> we're wicked. Of the flesh in and of ourselves, we're desperately wicked. Our hearts are wicked, apart from the intervention from Almighty God. Christian, we need to let God intervene in our heart each and every day, don't we? Do you ever find yourself shutting him out? Because we're so bogged down with news, with COVID, with bills, with stresses, with, I didn't get my way. I want this and I got to settle for that. Where's your heart today? Proverbs 4.23 says, Keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it flow the issues, or out of the issues of life. In other words, all, all of life comes out of what's going on in your heart, in the inner man. Again, you could turn to uh, Matthew chapter 12, verse 34. Jesus here, speaking to some of his opposition, says, You brood of vipers, how can you, being evil, speak what is good? For the mouth speaks out of that which fills the heart. If our words aren't kind, if our words aren't good, if our words aren't bringing peace into circumstances and situations, they're reflecting what's going on in our heart. God cares about our heart, about the real you, about the real me. Galatians 5 16 and 7. Galatians chapter 5, verses 16 and 7. 16 and 17. Paul has some great words here about guarding your heart or thinking about the change that God wants to affect in your life. And in my... Uh, my other Bible that uh, I, I used to preach out of for years, I, I have above this section of Scripture, What Real Men Do. So men, pay attention. Kids, teenagers, ladies, you got to pay attention too. <laughs> but I say, walk by the Spirit, and you will not carry out the desire of the flesh. For the flesh sets its desire against the Spirit, and the Spirit against the flesh. For these are in opposition to one another. To one another so that you may not do the things that you please. And then verse 18 goes on to say, But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. But if you are led by the Spirit, your heart will be in a place that's going to please God and will be useful in ministering grace to other people. Where your heart is is going to affect how you live today and tomorrow. The heart is revealed by your thoughts, right? It's revealed by your speech. It's revealed by your actions. Speech. We already looked at Matthew 12, 34. By your thoughts, we could look at Matthew 15, 19. In Matthew 15, 19, Jesus says, For out of the heart comes evil thoughts, murders, adulteries, fornications, thefts, false witness, slanders. Out of the heart, evil thoughts, murders, adulteries, fornications, theft, false witness, slanders. What's going on inside of you is going to affect what your life looks like, right? But God says we can change. And then actions, Matthew 15. Uh, actually, that's what I just read. Yeah, actions there. So this heart thing, protecting your heart. you got to protect it because it's the location of faith and belief. In Acts 16, 14, Paul and Philippi was sharing the good news and this lady, Lydia, she was down there by the river, right? And it says the Holy Spirit opened up her heart so that she could get saved, so that she could understand the things of God. Your heart has to be open, your mind, your will, your intellect, your emotions. God's concerned about all those things. 
Romans 10 10 says it's with our heart that we believe right so what's going on inside of you matters and Hebrews 3 12 is a warning to keep your heart full of faith don't fill up your life don't fill up your heart your mind with things that will tear your faith down but fill up things fill full of things that are be good So where, what is the real person like inside of you? Who are you really? Are you truly a Christ follower? Are you truly living for the Lord or are you living for someone or something else? Well, effective and lasting biblical change is something I would say we all need. Amen? I know Dale is a, is a godly man, and he's done a lot of things for the Lord. But I'm sure the Lord wants, Dale, some changes in your life, doesn't he? God's made a lot of changes in my life. But I can tell you, there's a lot more that need to happen. You know, Kathy is a wonderful lady, and she's a godly lady. But I just know that there's some things in Kathy's life that need to change. That God wants to work on. And that's true for all of us. Because, beloved, as a child of God, every day you need to be changing and, 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 and moving towards that higher ground we sang about. We are to obey the commands of God in every area of our life. And I can just think back in the last week, I, there's areas of my life where I, I probably need to repent. No problems about it. You know, but the only way we 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 can uh, change is to let God change us and to be a willing partner. Philippians chapter four, verses eight and nine. Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians. Philippians chapter four, verses eight and nine. Paul says, finally, brethren, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is of good repute, if there is any excellence and if anything worthy of praise, dwell on these things. In other words, think on these things, right? Mm -hmm. Dwell on these things. Apply your intellect. Apply your mind to it. The things you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, practice these things and the God of peace will be with you. Practice this thing. That has to do with the will, right? I'm going to make a decision. I'm going to do something different. I'm not going to do it the same way I've always done it. I want a different outlook, I mean an outcome, so I'm going to do, make a different decision to get there. Think on the right things. Have you been thinking on the right things? If we don't think on the right things, it's not good. Change involves putting off sinful practices. If you want to see change in your life, there's some things you got to let go of and other things you got to grab hold of, right? Repentance, confession, turning from sinful activity to things of God. 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verses 9 and 10. 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verses 9 and 10. Paul here says, Now I, I now rejoice, not that you were made sorrowful, but that you were made sorrowful to the point of repentance. That's change, right? For you were made sorrowful according to the will of God, so you might not suffer loss in anything through us. For the sorrow that is according to the will of God produces a repentance without regret, leading to salvation. But the sorrow of the world produces death. We've got to make changes. And change involves putting on spiritual truth. Do you know that when you take God's word and you apply it in your life and you do what the book says, the Holy Spirit works through you? Do you know that? Do you believe that? Can you think of a time when the Holy Spirit has made some positive change in your life? If you can't, you better rather evaluate and see if you're in the faith or not. 
Because we need God's Spirit and God's Word to work us over and to change us. Otherwise, it's just going through the motions, right? Because 1 Corinthians 2.14 says the problem with the natural mind or man of the unsaved is it cannot receive the things of the Spirit of God. So we got to be saved. 1 Corinthians 2.16 says the Christian has received the mind of Christ. If we have the mind of Christ, don't you think we ought to be making some better decisions than what we made before we had the mind of Christ? And a Christian has been renewed in the spirit of his mind, Ephesians 4.23. If you're not feeling renewed in the spirit of your mind, maybe you're not even the word, right? Maybe you're not reading your Bible. Maybe you're not meditating on Scripture. Maybe you're feeding on something else. I know for me, when, my, when I'm in God's Word, my mind is, is, is more right than when I'm not in God's Word, right? When I find myself fretting and stressing and worrying, it's probably because I haven't been in the Word the way I should be, right? Maybe I've done my Bible reading, but what, what was my attitude? Was I just racing through it? Oh, I got to get my five minutes in. So looking at the watch, reading, okay, one more sentence. Okay, good, I got it, right? Anybody ever do that besides me, or am I the only one? I usually don't do that anymore, but I've had my time. <laughs> but God wants us to have a renewed mind, not just to say we got a renewed mind, but because it will change our behavior. It will change our usefulness for the kingdom. We could go to Romans 6, 1 through 11, or we could go to Colossians 3, 1 through 3. Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians. We'll go to Colossians. It's a little bit shorter. Colossians 3, 1 through 3. Again, we're going to start off on this higher ground we sang about. Therefore, if you've been raised up with Christ, keep seeking the things that are above, where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your mind... You know, or set your heart, you could say, set your mind on the things above, not on things of the earth. For you have died and your life is hidden with Christ and God. Christian, this month especially, we have a great opportunity to witness to people, to share Christ with people, to talk about what the real meaning of Christmas is. But we got to keep seeking the things that are above. In other words, in, in order to do that with firm conviction and Holy Spirit empowerment we have to set our mind on the things above not on things of the earth I get my I get my my uh, mind set on things like vehicles vehicles are breaking down you gotta have a vehicle the freezer needs to be filled up it's hunting season right oh I don't have this or I don't have that well, if I just had that motorcycle, everything would be perfect. If these wheels were on my vehicle, it would be so good. If my children behaved in such a way, life would be good. I could sleep well at night, right? <laughs> All those things are good in one respect, but I'm not focused on Christ. If I would think, man, I just wish I was more diligent at, at, at honoring God in my thought life. I wish I was better at sharing my faith with people. I need a renewed mind. Because Christian, most of the confusion in your life and, 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 and most of the confusion in most people's life is faulty thinking. And if we don't have God's word engrafted in our life and we're not applying it, our thinking's going to be wrong. And there's going to be change occurring in our life, but not the change God wants to see. So this is why I wish I wouldn't have forgot them bulletins at home, because in closing, <laughs> achieving lasting change, I actually put down three subpoints with some scripture there to give to you. I mean, I normally don't do that. I'll make sure I get a copy to you, so you're going to have to remember. So achieving lasting change. I mean, when you've made changes in your life, have they lasted? godly biblical changes like I think about myself I used to smoke okay I smoked cigarettes I, I I started smoking when I was about 14 
And I smoked till I was about 27. And at one time, I was smoking well over a pack of cigarettes a day, sometimes a pack and a half. And I, and I could quit smoking. I couldn't tell you how many times I quit smoking. But you know, I could also start. I would make change and it wouldn't last because it would be change of the flesh. It wasn't, I wasn't doing, I didn't want to quit smoking to honor God. I was just thinking like, well, my, I'm not breathing good and I was thinking of physical reasons. So I, did, I would not have lasting change. But then I started, I had a great idea. I thought, okay, I know what I can do to quit smoking. If I start chewing, I'll still get that nicotine, but I, my lungs will be happy for it. But what did my gums say to me? Dave, what are you thinking? I still had that nicotine addiction. Then I, for about a year or so, I smoked and I dipped, right? Oh boy, I made a change all right, but it wasn't a godly change, it wasn't a good change, and it wasn't a lasting change. And the same way with drinking. I used to like to drink a lot when I was young. And all the fun things, fun things that came with it, over drinking. And I could quit drinking, because after a while we started having kids. I got married, had kids, and I thought, man, I don't want, I don't want them to learn from me. But I kept it drinking, and it's just when my oldest boys were little, oldest couple. But one day I, I read this Daily Bread why I'm sipping on whiskey and I got a chew in my mouth and I'm reading the daily bread. Was I a double-minded man? Yes. <laughs> but God's telling me, you got to make some changes, Dave Carroll. The daily bread said, prayer was never intended to be to replace effort. Or something like that. And it was 1 Corinthians 6, 19 and 20. And it said, what? Do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who lives in you? And you're not your own, you're bought with a price. Therefore, glorify God on your body and your spirit, which are the Lord's. And I might have missed a word or two there. But the Holy Spirit convicted me that day. I got up and poured out that glass, poured out that bottle, threw that can of Copenhagen in the trash. And I said, Lord, I would sure appreciate it if you would take away the desire for alcohol and tobacco from, from Dave Carroll and that I would never desire these things again now had I said many prayers before to try and quit drinking and chewing and all that yes but somehow that day with that Holy Spirit and that scripture God took away the desire for both like that I mean I can saw that a miracle don't you because I was a professional boozer and partier but God took those things away from me and that's the kind of change he wants to make in our life. It may not be alcohol and tobacco. It may be something else, right? Maybe you're a Fox News junkie and you need to get off. You need to wean yourself. Maybe you're a CNN junkie or a Newsmax, you know, or The Blaze or Facebook or Marketplace or whatever, Craigslist. Maybe you're a quilting junkie. How's that? I'll, I won't pick on the guy so much. <laughs> Or a baking junkie. But we got to respond immediately. Like Colossians says here. What well, doesn't say that, but I've applied that, okay? <laughs> and you can also look at James chapter 1, verses 22 and 25. Maybe we'll, we'll turn there. James says, but... Prove yourselves doers of the word and not merely hearers who delude themselves. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man who looks at his natural face in a mirror. For once he has looked at himself and gone away, he has immediately forgotten what kind of person he was. But the one who looks intently at the perfect law, the law of liberty, and abides by it, not having become a forgetful hearer, but an effectual doer, this man will be blessed in what he does. So in other words, where's your heart? Where's your mind, your intellect, your emotions? Are you focused on things of God? And if you are, when the Spirit talks, respond. Oh, amen? Mm -hmm. And we got to be consistent and faithfully practice the biblical pattern in our life. Galatians 6, 9. Philippians 4, 9. I think we read that already. Hebrews 5, 14. And then James 1, 25. We're right here. Okay? 
We've got to be consistent and faithful in applying God's word in our life. It's not helter-skelter. It's not random, okay? And when you sin, beloved, because you're going to sin and you're going to mess up, how are you going to respond? Are you going to ignore it? Are you going to whitewash it? We need to respond biblically when we fail, okay? You can write down, if you're making notes, Psalm 37, 24, Psalm 145, 14, Proverbs 24, 16, or we'll go to 1 John chapter 5. Because real <coughs> biblical lasting change and to guard your heart, you've got to be honest with yourself. And you got and you and you gotta be honest with God and you gotta apply God's word. Because we have victory over the world, amen? amen. We can have victory over the flesh in Christ. The aged apostle writes, For whatever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. Who is the one who overcomes the world? But he who believes that Jesus is the Son of God. Our faith, our saving faith is also our sanctifying faith. And we need to take advantage of that. When we sin, we need to respond biblically. Okay? Because we can overcome. And part of responding biblically is 1 John 1.9. Let's well, start off with verse 8. How's that? This would be a good closing. A good closing thought. If we say we have no sin, how about if we say we don't need to make any changes, right? If we say, I got it all figured out, I'm doing pretty good compared to what? But if we say we have no sin, we're deceiving ourselves. The truth is not in us. You know, you can fool other people, but you can't fool yourself, can you? And you certainly can't fool God. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and righteous to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. That's like a, a perpetual cleansing. If we say we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. Achieving lasting change, beloved, takes, takes a... Uh, you gotta be thinking about it, and you gotta want it. You gotta respond immediately. You gotta be consistent, okay? You gotta apply God's words to your success and your failures in life. But the biblical dynamics of change, change is a process for the Christian. Change involves putting off sinful practices and behaviors and thoughts. Change involves putting on spiritual growth. I maybe didn't say it quite like that as, as we went through it. But you can have lasting change. And if you have lasting change, that's protecting your heart. And if you protect your heart, you're going to be armored up. And you're going to be better able to deflect the, the, the wiles and the schemes of the devil. Especially this time of year when we're so subject to losing heart and thinking change is impossible. And that depression thing starts creeping in. So how is your heart this morning? I pray it's focused on God's word and God's son. Amen? Mm -hmm. And if you're not into the word like you should be, well, you can change that too, right? Mm -hmm. Today, open it up. And as I tell people, if you got nowhere else to go, Start off with the book of John, right? And then go to Romans and go back to John. That's some good medicine. <laughs> Let's close in prayer. <clears throat> Father, as we come before you this morning, I thank you for um, the way you want to change us, Lord. You want to change us based upon love. You have no ulterior motives. Uh, your desire is for each of us to become born again, to be saved, to be part of your family, Lord. In order to do that, we have to make some changes. Our heart has to have a different focus, Lord. Our, our mind has to think on different things than what uh, 
we would naturally think of, Lord. Our, uh, our decisions have to be decisions that will please you and not necessarily ourselves, Lord. Or other people, Lord. Sometimes we get in trouble because we want to be people pleasers and we need to be God pleasers, Lord. And Father, I pray that you will uh, just convict me of the areas of my life where I need to change, Lord. The attitudes I need to change. Where I'm weak in faith, Father, increase my faith. Lord, I'm thankful that when we come to know Christ as Savior and we get adopted into your family, that you don't give up on us. I thank you that you are a loving Father who, who desires nothing but good for his children. So, Lord, when we need correction, correct us. When we need discipline, discipline us, Lord. When we need affirmation and a, and a pat on the back, Lord, we know you're there. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for loving us enough to send Jesus Christ to die on that cross to pay the penalty for our sins, Lord, so that we could put our faith and trust in Jesus' uh, payment for our sins and not our own because we could never measure up, Lord. Thank you for your great love for us. And it's in Jesus' wonderful name we pray. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. All right, thanks. And you're dismissed.